take a look at this video. Russia says it's remotely detonated a tank filled with explosives in an apparent new tactic. Ben Weidman joins us now from Zaporizhia. Ben, let's talk about that first. Have we managed to geolocate that incident there? And if, if what the defense ministry is saying is true, have we seen this used as a tactic before? Uh, yes, we believe it's in the Marinka area, which is near the city of Donetsk in the Donbass uh, region. Now, according to an account of this incident put out by the Russian Defense Ministry on its Telegram channel, what you're seeing is a T-54 tank. That's a Soviet-era tank built in the years after World War II. Now, according to this account, uh, the tank was crammed with... 3.5 tons of TNT plus a thousand kilos of explosives extracted from other bombs as well. According to this account, apparently a tank man got in the tank, essentially pointed it in the direction of Ukrainian lines, jumped out, it went forward, it appears to have hit a mine and also got hit by an RPG round fired from the Ukrainian lines, and then it explodes. The explosion is massive. Clearly, there are some a huge quantity of explosives in that tank when it goes off. We don't know whether it actually succeeded in puncturing the Ukrainian lines. It appears to have been about 300 uh, meters from the Ukrainian lines. And we don't know if they actually the Russians were able to push forward in that particular area. But it does represent a new, if somewhat crude, tactic. And it's difficult to say if this is going to be used on a wider scale, but it certainly is dramatic. At least that can be said, Julia. Certainly. Ben Weedman, thank you. And joining us now, CNN military analyst, retired Lieutenant General Mark Hartling. General, great to see you. So help us understand the significance here. Yes, it's a spectacular picture and getting a lot of attention because of that. But what does it tell you if the Russians are blowing up some of their own tanks in defense of territory? Well, not quite sure, not quite sure yet, John, but what I'd suggest is we saw pictures weeks and months ago about Russia bringing very old T-62s, uh, even some T-55 tanks to the front line. So if you can remotely pilot them like a kamikaze drone or something like that and put them into a front line, you could actually maneuver some of those tanks over short distances and then have them explode remotely. It's kind of a moving uh, improvised explosive device, if you will. Yes, the United States also has remotely piloted vehicles like this, uh, not used very often. They're usually used for reconnaissance. But this is, if this proves to be true, this is a new type of tactic that the Russians are using, exploding old tanks on the front line. It seems a little bit ridiculous, truthfully. Um, let me show people where we believe the most activity is currently going on. It's in this region right here, which is south of the city of Zaporizhia. I can push in to give people a better sense. These towns right here are towns that the Ukrainians say they have retaken over the last few days. Now, you look at this, General, and you say these towns are important because of where they bring the Ukrainians closer to, and that's down here to the city of Melitopol there. What's the significance? Yeah, a couple things, John. On the first one, you see that town of Piatsky, which is below Lovkovy, which the Ukrainians claimed the latter was something that they overtook last week, last Friday. Piatsky is what the Russians are now saying the Ukrainians have taken. So it's, it's getting information from the other side. And as you continue on those lines, it takes it toward the city of Melitopol, also Berdyansk and Mariupol, which are clear on your maps, big city. Those are three cities which connect a major transport route, the, what they call the M14 European Highway. That is how Russia is bringing goods and resupplies to their frontline troop on that so-called southern bridge that they have. So what we're talking about is the potential for, uh, for Ukraine to continue their attack, even though they have not uh, reached the frontline obstacle belts, what the Russians are calling their zero line, where they have the most obstacles and the most troops. It, it does indicate 
that Ukraine's offensive in multiple directions is succeeding. And even though it seems to be going slowly as a military guy, what I'll tell you, two or three to five to 10 kilometers a day is a pretty good offensive operation in multiple directions. Talk more about this if you can, General, because if the Ukrainians are making progress, it is slow progress and hard won progress because the Russians are so dug in, particularly along this line right here. So what does constitute success for them, particularly in this region? Well, if, if you draw that line four more, three more times, John, there are four different defensive belts that have been monitored through satellites. The first two, uh, the Russians have limited number of troops defending them, although they do have minefields and wires. They do have some troops in the trenches. And the Ukrainians have been very successful against those lines, although it's moving slowly. That map that you're showing from that front line where the red begins all the way to the bottom where those three cities are we just talked about is probably close to about 70 miles. So it is a tough offensive as you're going through various obstacle belts. And, and like I said, what the Russians are calling their zero line is the one furthest south. That's the one that has the most obstacles, supposedly the best trained Russian forces, although uh, in different parts of that line, you'll see, you'll see different uh, standards of quality in the Russian forces. So what Ukrainian forces are now trying to do is find the best place to continue their attack and even in some cases have their, spe their special operations forces behind those lines and attacking from the rear along with the territorials. So again, it, it will be slow moving. We've known this from the start. There will be a whole lot of casualties along each one of those four lines on both sides, but it's going to be dependent on how stiff the Rus Russian resistance is. And what we've seen so far is they, are, they have become stiff in some areas and they have run away in others. So it's going to just, uh, I'm, I'm gonna introduce you to a new doctrinal term this morning, John, and that's dots. Depends on the situation that the enemy uh, holds and which the Ukraine can uh, push through. Dots, I will use that in conversation and claim it as my own. Uh, General, super instructive. Thank That's you so very much. <laughs>